Both go. Good morning and welcome back for part two of the Haunted Hotels of South Carolina. We're your hosts, Andrea and Alex. Now, before we get started this week, though, me and Alex are going to tell y'all about some fun that we had this past Wednesday night. Yes. Um, it was amazing. It was. It was. Um, so, you know, I mentioned last week on the Midweek Mini that me and Alex were going to AEW fight for the fallen mm -hmm. and it was in charlotte so we got up wednesday morning you know got ready so excited drove to charlotte took us all day it was hot as you know what <laughs> sweated all my makeup off then i decided to take the rest of the makeup off while we were sitting in the parking lot oh and we had the best lunch oh yeah, that lunch at the we ate at the landmark. Um, I wish I knew our waitress's name. I'd give her a big shout out, but she was awesome. Like she was cool. She like kept our drinks coming without us even asking. She like checked on us multiple times, and you know what? What the dude God Fietti or however you say <laughs> his name. He, he's been there before, so and he did um. An episode there, so we're gonna have to check. No, we're it. doing an episode, of part of and we're doing an episode of it right now. So we're like right up there with Gaffietti. No, not really. But anyway, so, um, so after we ate, of course we got lost like three or four times because y'all, Charlotte. I'm gonna tell you something. When you come from a little bitty town like Whitmire, and you drive to Charlotte, it's like the Beverly Hillbillies going to somewhere fancy like. I guess when they went to Beverly Hills, I don't know, but it, it was just uh, amazing. Like the the skyscrapers <laughs> and everything, we're just like, wow, <laughs> that's a big building. It's a big building. I mean, we got big cities here like Columbia and Greenville and such, but they don't have buildings like that. I mean, it was crazy. Every time I go to Charlotte, I'm amazed by it. Um, but anyway, we had a real good time. Now, like I said, our seats was in the nosebleed section. We were like three rows from the ceiling. Okay. <laughs> like, you know how they slope up. Well, we were three from the back, but we could see like the most, it was the most amazing view because we could see everything going on. Like we weren't flat on the floor and I'm short. So, I mean, you know, people would be standing in front of me. Yes. Now I did almost die getting to our seats because it was like a straight up incline going to our seats, had a massive asthma attack when we got to our seats. Yes. But after I could breathe again and got sat down and comfortable, it was amazing like it was so freaking amazing and i have to say i think that i did get to see my kenny i did get to see him yes. but honestly i feel like the best match the whole night was jericho dude, and nick and nick gage, gage. Dude, dude that was like insanity oh like God. i've seen a lot of like violent matches that life that was crazy. The 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 pizza cutter <laughs> across his forehead. I was getting mad at him too. I've heard, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then like he get would use like the fluorescent bulb tube things. Um, oh, it, I, I've never seen a match like that before. Yeah. And now that I've watched the video of it, because I mean, of course, as high up as we could, we were, we could see really good, but we couldn't see their faces and whatnot like you know like sitting on front row um so what now that i've watched the video of it and seen chris's face i'm like oh my god i can't even imagine sitting on front row for all that but i still have nightmares about the pizza cutter yeah. <laughs> and i like if i think about it i can feel it like rolling across my forehead like i know it's weird i'm weird like that um but we saw, like, so many of our favorites. Um, yes, we did. Oh, my God. Uh, the only person I didn't get to see that I really wanted to see was Abaddon. Oh, my God. She's, like, my favorite female wrestler. But Thunder Rosa was there. Yes. She was really cool. Um, 
got to see the Varsity Blondes. Yes. Um, that's another favorite. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Archer. Lance Archer. Yes. Oh, my God. Lance. That was a good match. Lance is there. He is. Um, dude, I got to Malachi tried to kill Cody. <laughs> This whole, sh- that whole show. When he like attacked him while Cody was sitting there talking, I was like, "Whoa, what happened?" <laughs> oh my god! And it was Malachi because you know, like I have crushed on him since he was Alistair on the other network that he used to wrestle for. The other company. That other company, and um, so you know. It was just amazing to see him. We saw Miro, who used to be... The... Uh, Rusev. <laughs> yeah. Machka. Now he's... Now he's... Cool. <gasps> we saw Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy. Um, we saw everybody. We saw, like... Seriously, like, everybody was there. Um, I can't really think of a whole lot of them that weren't there. Um, but, you know, if y'all ain't into wrestling and we didn't bored you this much... Uh, we're going to start talking about <laughs> this episode in just a minute, okay? We had so much fun, we just could not talk about it at the beginning. So, anyway. Um, Alex, what was your favorite match? Lance, no, no, no. Just seeing Lance is my favorite part. But. I, Demons are here. Lights are flickering. <laughs> my favorite match was Jericho versus K- Gage. I said Cage. Dude, the glass everywhere and the light tubes. That was pizza cutter. Oh my! But, that was like when the glass started going everywhere. I was kind of glad we didn't have front row seats because yeah. <laughs> I have like freak accidents, so I can just see like shards of glass going in my eyeballs or something. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it was. And the thing about it too is, it was so good to get out of the house. I mean, we've been getting out of the house, but, like, for a big event, because we haven't got to go to concerts or wrestling or anything, you know, because of COVID. Yeah. And, oh, man, it was so needed. And I think the whole audience, the whole crowd there Wednesday night was feeling that, because we've all just been, like, closed up. And, like, I mean, yeah, we go to Walmart, but... Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you know, it's not, like, a live event, but, I mean, well, it could be, because, you know, people can get pretty nasty inside Walmart, so... And this heat's making people nasty, too. Like, oh, Lord, it's hot. Yeah. Like, our feels like have been in the triple digits, like, almost a week now. And I don't like it, but this coming week, the weather's supposed to be better. We're supposed to get a lot of rain this week. And the temperatures are going down. So, there's that. We've got that to look forward to. Well, Alex, I suppose we should get on with the show. Let's start the episode now. Let's start the episode. Yay. Yeah, well, now that we've got that out of our system, it's like um, episode already. Yeah, we got to get into this episode. Um, but like you know, this this like I said is part two of our haunted hotels. Um, yes. There was just so many in my research, and they all had good backstories and whatnot. That I I was just like. I can't make this just one episode and leave out some. And I was like, which ones would I even leave out? You know? Um, Now, if you listened last week, you know that we talked about the Embassy Suites in Charleston, the Francis Marion Hotel, the Belmont Inn, the South Battery Carriage House Inn, um, Mansfield Plantation, Weston Poinsett, and the Litchfield Plantation House. Well... There are so many more, and we're going to talk about them today. So let's move on to some more hotels, Alex. Yes. One of these that we're going to talk about today is pretty close to us, too. It is. It is very close to us. Very. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Yes. So the first one we're going to talk about, and it's kind of close, too, but it's the Embassy Suites in Greenville. Now, we talked about the Embassy Suites in Charleston last week, but these are the Embassy Suites in Greenville. And now I have to say that nobody has seen, like, a ghost so much as as seeing one but stuff happens there and this is not like an old historic building like the others we've talked about it's a fairly new building 
But there's a lot of spooky things that have happened between the walls of this hotel. Lights seem to just cut themselves on and off at random. And even like back when that building was being constructed, the lights would come on. And the spooky thing about that was that the electricity hadn't even been turned on yet. Like, the lights come on and there's no electricity. Yeah. Doors seem to just fly open on their own and then they slam shut. And I have this vision about that. Um, I feel like a ghost is, like, slamming that door open and saying, hey, and people's not responding to him. So he just slams it back. Like, don't talk to me then. And then slams the door. But anyway, that's just my stupid opinion. Um... There's stuff that goes on outside that hotel, too. Now, there's a golf course that's part of that hotel. There's spots on the ground that absolutely nothing will grow on. Like, it's just bare. Um, nothing like grass or flowers, nothing will grow there. So, it's crazy. Now, there's golfers that have reported hearing these disembodied cries or moaning when they're out there playing golf on the golf course. I know. I know. It's crazy. Now, if you want to check it out, there's two embassy suites in Greenville, but the one that we're talking about is located on Verde Boulevard. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to go showing up at the wrong one and be like, she said this was haunted. It is not haunted. <laughs> <But> <laughs> now, the one that I was talking about that's close to us, Alex, is the Inn at Meriden, and it's in Union. Oh. Yeah. Um, now, I'm closed. sad to say that it's currently closed, and according to Google, it says permanently closed. Wow. I don't know if that's just because of COVID or if the people have just decided to close it and own it or what, but it's said that it's haunted by as many as 10 ghosts, 10 different ghosts, and all of them are friendly, though. So, um this, there, you know, nobody's there that you should be scared of. Um, and you'll know that one is near because you'll suddenly smell either like rose scented perfume or cigar smoke. Um, two of the ghosts who used to reside at the Meriden are known to leave pennies for the guest of the inn. That's nice. Yeah, pennies. Um, many ghosts, many ghosts, many guests <laughs> have reported hearing harpsichord music being played late at night. But there's actually not even a harpsichord on the property. Oh. Now, others have seen the apparition of a white dog. And it makes me wonder if it's the happy dog that we talked about way back on episode 7 back in February of this year. Now, where the happy dog originates from, you know, over in Goshen area, is not terribly far from the Meriden. So, I mean, it could be him or it just could be another white dog. Um, now, when it was still open... The resident cat at the end could be seen talking, you know, like how cats will meow and like they're talking to you, to an unseen person often. Like he would just sit there and meow at some nobody else could see. Um, I, I thought that was kind of cool. Now, the house itself was built in 1855 by the mayor of Union, and it's seen a lot of people come and go over the years. And in 1990, it was purchased by someone else, and renovations were started in 1992. Well, during those renovations, they started seeing a lady in a gray dress, and soon they would start finding pennies left on the floor. They brought in a clairvoyant, and, and that person identified 10 energy forces in the house. Some of those ghosts have been identified as children, Native Americans, and a lady named Margaret. Now, it's a beautiful house. <laughs> it's me again, Margaret. Um, like I said, it's a beautiful house. And I hate that it's like, it says permanently closed. But I'm hoping that maybe somebody will come along with the financial resources to, you know, restore it to its former glory and open it back up as a bed and breakfast or something. Because it's very, it's really pretty. Um, Alex, next time we're in Union, I'll have to show you where it's at. Because it's very nice. Um, now, over in Aiken, South Carolina, there's a bed and breakfast that is said to be haunted. Now, the name of the place is Annie's Inn. And it's very beautiful. I was looking at pictures of it online, and they have a big swimming pool, all kind of stuff. It's, it's really nice. Now, the mansion itself was built before the Civil War, 
But during the war, Union troops barricaded themselves inside of that house, and they took over the entire property. Now, in an attempt to run the Union soldiers out, a cannonball was fired by the Confederates, and it took out the entire top floor, which was where the servants' quarters were. Now, that house, that or they never did rebuild that top floor. Um, and after the war, a doctor bought the house and used the second floor as a hospital. So what they did was just like, instead of rebuilding that whole top third floor, I guess they just closed it in with the roof. Um, but um, anyway, a doctor bought it, and he used the entire top floor of the house, which was the second floor now, as a hospital. So you, I can imagine a lot of people died there over the years because, you know, medical care wasn't like what it is today. So in 1984, the home was opened as Annie's Bed and Breakfast Inn. The area that used to be the hospital is now where the guest rooms are located. Many, many visitors have reported hearing a little girl's voice. Sometimes she's giggling, and other times she's calling for her mommy. That just makes me sad. No one is sure, but they think her spirit attached to the house when it was used as a hospital. Now, if this is somewhere that you would like to check out, I'm thinking that we should, Alex. Yes. <coughs> we should check in this one day. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised that you even said that. But anyway, it's located on the Charleston Highway. Right outside of Aiken, South Carolina. Now, now we're going to go back to Charleston for a little while because yeah. there's like four haunted hotels in Charleston that we didn't talk about last week. Now, the first one we're talking about is the Barksdale House Inn. I had never heard of it until I started doing research for this episode. And, of course, Alex, this is another one we need a vacation at. Yes. Indeed. I got so many vacations like planned for us. That were probably so little money. <laughs> now, according to a review of the inn from back in 2013, a guest had an encounter with a ghostly figure who they described as a 60-something-year-old man. Now, they didn't give a whole lot of details, but they did say that he appeared briefly before he disappeared back through the closet wall. That house was built in 1778, so it's really old. Um... It's located in the historic area of downtown Charleston. Now, other visitors have seen the 60-something-year-old apparition in their room. Now, nobody knows who this fellow is, but the general thought on his identity is that he was one time a guest at the inn, and when he passed away, he just decided to come back to that inn and hang out in his afterlife. Whatever floats your boat, ghosty, you know. Um, then there's the Jasmine House Inn, and... The history of the house and how it came to be is interesting in itself. It was built in 1843, and although the address is officially Charleston, the area that it stands in is known as Ansonboro. Now, Ansonboro is named after a man by the name of Lord Anson, and he was from England. He won that area in a poker game. Yeah, like, Harry, just have a chunk of the city. Um, and that's where he built his house. Well, for many years, guests and staff have been seeing non-living guests. And one guest who was staying in the chrysanthemum room says that he was visited by a female spirit who didn't want him to leave her. And I guess she had really, like, took a real good liking to him. Because when he got ready to leave that morning, that, the morning that he was leaving... She tore his morning newspaper up and scattered the pieces all over the floor. Oh my God. Yeah, kind of hateful. Yeah, uh, <coughs> I got this cough, y'all. Um, but can you imagine just a ghost like picking up your paper and just tearing it into shreds and then like just throw it all over the room? Yes. She did not want him to leave. <laughs> now, next is the 1837 bed and breakfast. Now, the 1837 bed and breakfast is the home of a ghost named George, and he's George. a friendly ghost. Oh, he's nice. Yeah, That's it's a little guy. boy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's made his home there for quite a while, and here's the thing. He's a little boy, like I said, and he's quite active. He's a very active little spirit. Mm -hmm. He loves to run up and down the hallways. 
and guests have even been awakened by him shaking their beds in the middle of the night, That's especially nice. the ones that stay in room 2-2 and 3-1. That's not nice. I know. I would be mad. Yeah. Wake me up in the middle of the night. <laughs> Little ghost boy. Um, he's also known to open and close bathroom doors, too. Now, the owners of this inn acknowledge his existence, and they tell their ghosts that they don't have to be afraid of George because he don't mean any harm. And he's, they say he's quite charming and polite. Now, this inn is located on Wentworth Street, if you want to visit it. I think that's kind of interesting. Like, yes, it's it a little is. kid ghost. But then it's kind of sad, too. Yeah. No? Now, so. and finally for Charleston, we have the Meeting Street Inn. No Take it away, Alex. I got a call. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, short notice. I've been dying for like eight weeks eight now. now. Okay, but anyway, we're getting back to the meet and street in. Yes. There are a couple of rooms to point out that seem to be the most, that or they seem to see the most paranormal activity. One room is room 303, and it said that the ghost who hangs out there likes the room to itself and has even been known to lock the door from the inside. And even if you try to unlock it from the outside, the force that the ghost used to hold the um, door shut is so great that it will only give up if someone tries to break down the door. It's, it's, I, I do not want to stay in room 303. Now, the other room is 107, and it's inhabited by a female spirit. And she's much nicer than the ghost of 303. She doesn't mind sharing her room, and she's even been seen at the foot of the bed. Now, if you decide to spend the night there, you might want to avoid staying in room 303. I definitely would. Unless you don't mind getting locked out of your room. Now, this inn is located on Meeting Street, as the name implies. I just wonder who that ghost is in room 303 that he doesn't want nobody in that room. And why don't he want people in that room? Who knows? Who knows? Now, in the upstate of South Carolina, there's a town called Lyman, L-Y-M-A-N, um, and that's where we find our next inn. We're talking about the Walnut Lane Inn, and it is said that a dark figure likes to hang out in the kitchen there. A second ghost is a woman who's seen in, like, dark skirts, and she seems to like the stairs because... That's where she's often seen, and she's even knocked a few pictures off the wall. And the owner said that she believes that's why she spends a lot of time straightening up pictures that's hanging crooked on the wall of, of going up the stairs because this ghost likes to keep rearranging yeah. their pictures. But um, that's kind of funny. But there's a third ghost there that only the dogs that live there at that, that inn seem to see they start barking um and when somebody checks to see who they're barking at there's nobody there and i know a lot of dogs bark at nothing but you know eddie he used to like look down the hallway and bark and we wouldn't see anything yeah or that one wall in the living room he would bark at mm -hmm. i mean i i do believe animals have a sense for spirits and stuff yeah now on um, Polly's Island, and we did talk about one on Polly's last week, but this is another one, and I couldn't leave it out, but it's called the Pelican Inn. Now, <clears throat> it's known for having actually several ghosts on the property. The main ghost is the gray man who is seen around the hotel and walking along the beach. Another ghost is that of a woman who is believed to have been a maid at the hotel. She sent, they've seen her like wandering up and down the stairs and in the kitchen like she's going about her daily routine. Like she still works there, you know. Yeah. Um, now, I want to go back and talk about the gray man for a minute because, you know, everybody in the southeast pretty much knows about the gray man. He's usually seen like right before hurricanes or bad storms. They've even like talked about him on the Weather Channel. In Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, he's seen walking the coastline warning people of the danger coming. Now, no one has 
any exact information on who he is or when he started, you know, giving his warnings. But some say that he's been seen in the area since 1822. He was last seen in 2018 before um, Hurricane Florence made landfall. Now, some people say that he's either the ghost of Blackbeard the Pirate, which would be kind of cool. Okay. And I believe it could be him because they say he's dressed kind of as a pirate. Yeah. Or it could be the ghost of Percival Polly, who Polly, po- like who, what? That's who Polly's Island is named after. Yeah. Or Charles Generette Weston, who was the owner of the home that is now the Pelican Inn. No, I mean, unless he just tells somebody, I doubt we ever knew. But, um, now, I personally have not been, or have not seen the gray man. Mm-hmm. But I have a tendency to not go to the beach when they say a hurricane is coming. Uh, it just seems odd to do something like that, but oh well. Now, I just want to say that ghost hunting is a ton of fun. And whether you go out to hotels or just anywhere... Don't forget to be, like, super respectful of people's property. Um, as far as ghost hunting at the hotels we've talked about, I'm not sure how the managers and owners feel about people just showing up without a reservation. You know, just to go snooping to see if you see their hotel. So, before you go, you may want to give them a call and see if they do, like, tours or if it's okay just to come by on your own. Now, I only tell you this because I don't want any of y'all catching a trespassing charge, Okay. Now, one thing I should add about the city of Charleston is that there's several really good ghost tours to check out while you're there. And they have really knowledgeable guides on these um, tours. If you decide to check them out, please be sure to let us know. I, I want to know about your experiences. And like I've always said, you can reach us through our email address, like through the Facebook page or, page or through like Twitter. Um, I want to hear about your paranormal experiences. Ain't that right, Alex? Yes. I hear our spooky tales. Did you say sweet potatoes? It's spooky tales. Oh, I thought you said sweet. Maybe I'm falling apart. But anyway, y'all, that's all we've got for today. I hope y'all have enjoyed this part, too, of um, the Haunted Hotels of South Carolina. Now, be sure to come back Wednesday for that's an all-new new mini episode um it's our midweek mini <laughs> yeah i can't talk today alex mm-hmm. and on saturday for the weekend weird files Yay. y'all have a good, good weekend um, or week 